Another week, and here we are, Tom Van Haren bringing every single color with his shirt. <laughs> Brad Galley, Tom Van Haren here with 4th and 1 Michigan recruiting. Things didn't exactly go as Michigan planned against UConn, but we're here to break down what that means for recruiting going forward, what that possibly means for the team and the holes that could be filled going forward, and getting you up to date on the best prospects in the class that are looking at Michigan, thinking about Michigan, and have even committed to Michigan. So. Let's kick things off with first down, Tom, and looking at that game, there are clearly some areas for improvement in Michigan <laughs> uh, on defense, on offense, a lot of places. Where can recruits fill those holes? Well, I think a lot of times what the fans can look at when, the, when this question comes up, you can really look at trends within the recruiting classes and you can kind of see where the coaches feel they have big needs. This class, they, they filled linebackers up. So you can tell that's a big need right now. Uh, they have Michael Ferns committed, Chase Winovich, a local kid, Jared Wangler from yeah. De La Salle. Uh, so you, you can kind of tell where the holes are. Offensive line is always going to be a big need. And as we saw in the game, yeah. offensive line going forward is going to be a big focus for them. Um, the last two classes, offensive line has been good to them too. They, they picked up some big prospects. The problem with the line is it takes a little bit longer for those guys to develop. So they're not going to be able to help out right away. Uh, but you can kind of see where things are heading. Michigan's going in the right direction to fix a lot of those holes. It just might take some time to get those figured out. I know I get very similar questions that I'm sure you get, <laughs> you know, 10 times over on Twitter. Our O-line's terrible. At, this is quoting a Michigan fan. How are the recruits going to help? And like you just said, you have to temper that excitement and sure. that enthusiasm a little bit because sure. these guys aren't exactly going to come in and play right away. I mean, right. a lot of them will redshirt. Most of them won't see the field for a consistent amount of time. So how do you, I guess, as a recruiter, if you're an assistant coach on that team, kind of say, hold on, there are holes, but you can come in at a certain time. Well, I mean, what's that dynamic like? Well, you know, it depends on the position, I think. You know, we, we talked about offensive line. If the need is there and if – if the prospect is good enough, I mean, you look at a guy like Kyle Kalis, he's a redshirt freshman, he's, he's starting. He's on the interior line, he's starting, and, and he's actually, uh, he was a prospect that everybody was focused on, not just because he originally committed to Ohio State, decommitted, right. then wound up at Michigan, but uh, he was a guy that trained with LaCharles Bentley, a former NFL offensive lineman, and I spoke with LaCharles when Kyle was about to head up to Michigan his senior year, he's about to get up there. I, I asked LaCharles where Kyle was at physically, and he said right now he's probably a, a college sophomore wow. as, from a physical standpoint. Yeah. So it just depends on the prospect. It depends on the position. It really, it, there's a lot of different factors. I mean, you're, you're kind of seeing in the secondary, you're seeing some, some younger guys out there. Uh, Derek Green's getting a few opportunities at running back. I think that's a little, a, a little normal for a running back to get yeah. opportunities. So it just depends on where you're at and, and what position you play. It's a little concerning. And we'll move on to second down now that two weeks – uh, against lower competition, Michigan has really faltered. I mean, at one point, it's a bad week. <laughs> Two weeks, it's more, it's more than just a trend. It's maybe a reflection of what kind of football team you have. So you are on the ground talking with all these recruits. Monday morning, you released even uh, your big insider uh, recruiting wrap-up. What are you hearing about the effect that these past two weeks, and especially that UConn game, has on the recruiting classes? Not a lot, right. and that's a good thing for Michigan. The, the way that Michigan recruits, I've, I've said this before, too, I think it's a positive the way that Brady Hoke and his staff recruit. They, they don't, it's not a soft sell. They don't, they don't get kids in and say, let's come in and we're going to win right away. And, and you know, they don't promise certain things. What they say is this is a family atmosphere. You're going to get a good education. Uh, they say the right things to get these, these guys committed for the right reasons. And on top of that, you have guys like Michael Ferns, Wilton Spate, Drake Harris. All those guys are recruiters for Michigan as well. Yeah, so it's taken on a whole life of its own. I mean, I mean, Shane last year yeah. and the year before that when he was recruited as a junior, I mean, they all go out and recruit themselves, send the T-shirts and yeah. make the T-shirts themselves. It's pretty unique. Well, and social media has helped with that. Yeah, Facebook sure. and Twitter and, and cell phones and, you know, group text messages and all that. They've all, they've all become really close, but that helps Michigan. That helps every school, really. Uh, those kids have, have created a bond with each other, and they've created this, this tight-knit group that it's not a kid that just committed and, and said, well, we'll see what happens yeah. down the road. So it, it hasn't really affected anything yet. If it continues down the road and it's a problem within Big Ten season mm -hmm. and, and the season ends up being a disaster, then I think you could see uh, some, so a little bit of movement or maybe at least some thoughts or whispers. But right now, everything's okay. And I can't imagine it becoming that big of a problem in the Big Ten, I'd be really surprised just because, I mean, if you look at the rest of the conference, <laughs> yeah. with all due respect to Michigan State, 
Ohio State's going to be the only trouble, I think, this year for Michigan. Uh, if you didn't see it, if you don't follow Tom on Twitter, Tom VH, you got a new profile picture. I did. On ESPNU. You can catch him there now. Uh, <laughs> explain what you were doing there because we get into our third down point. I just want to introduce it because we're going to talk about the 2015 class, and I know you're on there talking a little bit. Yeah, well, we have a, a show on ESPNU called Recruiting Nation. It's every week on Thursday. Um, I get invited out there sometimes to be in studio and, and talk a little Big Ten recruiting, so that's always fun. I'll be on there a few times. Uh, for the rest of the season, but um, you know it's always fun to to get out, go down to Charlotte, and and talk recruiting on TV. I like the picture somebody made of you at the Jeopardy <laughs> yeah. desk from that. You can see that right now. I think that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, that that was clever. <laughs> I I appreciate creative, unique. If you're gonna razz me on Twitter, it it better be funny. It better be creative. I appreciate that. All right, so let's get down to that creativity and talk about that 2015 class, which last week you said was a smaller class, and right now it's still quiet, but what are you hearing? Any updates with some names you can uh, inform us about? Well, it's, it's going to take a while, I think. A lot of these okay. kids are still going through the process because, how well, because of how well Michigan's doing in recruiting. They're after some of the top kids, and those mm -hmm. kids tend to take their time. So that's not a bad thing. They had some kids in for the Notre Dame game, which we already talked about. Crazy atmosphere, right, right. Uh, a good start for Michigan. Guys like Jay Sean Cornell, the number one ranked prospect in the country, he he's going to have. He, I, I believe he's actually going to release his top ten soon, and I believe Michigan will be in there. Um, he, they've got top kids all over the place. Deshaun Hand, he has a friend down in Virginia, Tim Settle, a defensive tackle. He's we have him at number number seven overall. He came up to the Notre Dame game as well. He's speaking highly of Michigan. He doesn't right. he doesn't have an offer yet. But he's going to be a guy that, that's going to be very highly recruited, and he's already speaking highly of Michigan. So despite the small numbers, I believe Michigan has an opportunity once again to get a, a highly ranked class. I, I, I think, and don't quote me on this yet because it's too early, <laughs> but I think that Michigan has the opportunity to, to land probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 9 to 10 ESPN Junior 300 guys for that class. Unbelievable. It just keeps getting better and better if you're a Michigan fan with these recruiting classes. Fourth down, this is one of the coolest stories uh, for recruiting and one of the most difficult as well for this prospect, Yalta Froholt. Uh, break it down and, and inform people about this incredible journey. One of the most difficult pronunciations too for his yeah. name, Yalta. <laughs> yeah, it's an interesting story. It makes, it, it makes the process a little bit more difficult as if it, it weren't already difficult enough. Uh, he is originally from Denmark. He's a 2015 prospect. We have him in the ESPN Junior 300, and he was only here for his sophomore season. So that, that should tell you how much he stood out. He racked up offers. He, he played in Ohio. He was here just for one year. He's already moved back to Denmark, and I actually believe he's in Sweden right now. Uh, but he's going through the process. He has Michigan in his top group with Michigan State, Ohio State, and Arkansas. So he, he's planning right now, he's planning on coming back for his senior season. He does want to play college football in America, um, but it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. And, it, uh, you know, I'm used to saying that. It's going to be interesting to see how this plays yeah. out. But this is a little bit different it's a dynamic. Different level, man. And when you talk about sometimes when uh, players go to an away uh, environment for the first time, a road environment for the first time, that's going to be daunting. I would assume for him once he gets to college, traveling and all of that won't even be a factor. Right, and it's almost like Bjorn Warner at, at Florida State. Yeah. It's almost a, a similar situation, and I, he, he does all his emails through, excuse me, he does all his interviews through email, uh, which is unique as well. So you have to imagine going through the process, trying to build a relationship with a coaching staff has to be difficult. Um, it, it, we'll see how that plays out and how the coaches get unique maybe, yeah. or creative in, in how they can recruit him. I think Michigan's got a good shot, too. I, like I said, they're in his top four, but I, I think this might come down to Michigan and Ohio State. Well, that's always fun. Yeah. Uh, on our show, we do four downs of recruiting current players uh, that are trying to get to Michigan. And on that extra point, we talk about players in that uniform already in Ann Arbor. And we wanted to talk maybe about that defensive back unit and the impact some of the younger players are having on pushing some of the veteran players well, I, I think, like we mentioned before, you can see trends within recruiting and, and how the coaches recruit. And I think this last class, you saw that defensive back was a big need for them. They took quite a few. They landed a lot of their top targets. They, they got some under-the-radar guys. Channing Stribling was a guy that, that wasn't really on the radar, and then fans saw him blow up. Um, he actually got some playing time, not in this last game, but I, I believe in the Akron game. 
Um, and then Jordan Lewis is another guy who, who's been getting time. He unfortunately he, he committed a, a penalty in the last game, which which was a little bit costly. But uh, I think you're going to start to see someone like Jordan Lewis get a little bit more playing time as he gets a little more comfortable. Um, he can he can help out in the secondary with his speed, his athleticism. Watching him going through the process, you could just tell he he's just a he's just a guy that's always around the ball, and that's what Michigan needs right now. They need guys that are going to make plays for them, especially within the secondary. So I, I think there's opportunity for some of those guys there. Maybe not at safety so much, but maybe at the cornerback spots. Well, it seems like with a lot of those younger guys already working in, it's apparent that the coaches don't feel exactly comfortable with some of the older guys that are in place. Absolutely, and, and that's kind of where again you can go back to the trends point. You can look at where the coaches are comfortable and, and where some of these guys are, are progressing. You know, a guy like Jordan Lewis, I mean, for, for him to be in that, not just in a game like that, but in that situation, especially in the Akron game, I believe he got quite a bit of playing time, and they were, they were struggling in that game. So for him to be put in that situation, it tells you that the coaches think highly of him. Well, Tom Van Heeren bringing it all the time. We think very highly of him. <laughs> and so does your wife, on, I guess, watching the Emmy red carpet. I saw that tweet. Yeah, that didn't go over too well. No. She asked me to watch the red carpet and report back to her. I don't know what I could possibly report back from You're that. You're a but. style icon. <laughs> As always, he'll join us every week for fourth and one Michigan recruiting to break down everything you need to know about your favorite football team and who's coming next to Ann Arbor.